It's really hard to overstate the impact that this engine can have. We burn over 375 million gallons of gasoline each day here in the U.S. And here's an engine that could be utilized in cars, trucks, generators, anything that uses an internal combustion engine. And it has the raw potential to reduce that number by almost 100 million gallons of gasoline each day. Now, let me repeat that last bit because it's just an astounding number. This engine has the raw potential to reduce our fuel consumption in this country by nearly 100 million gallons of gasoline each day. So in essence, what I've done is redesigned the bottom end of the internal combustion engine. The place where the pistons and the crankshaft are and where the power is actually generated. What I've done is focus on the friction in that area and reduce it by 50%, one half, 50% of what it normally is. And this amounts to a 25% reduction in fuel consumption and as well a 25% improvement in CO2 emissions. Uh, so for the average person, uh, you or I, what that amounts to is a 25% reduction in fuel costs on a monthly basis, or uh, of course, it would mean as well a 25% reduction if you had a fleet of vehicles. After I had initially designed the engine, I applied for patents and uh, received three patents on the design. Uh, after that, uh, I got the, the uh, patents. A uh, family friend of ours, unbeknownst to me, uh, submitted my website to a popular tech blog, uh, which picked it up, and uh, it actually led to uh, the idea being featured in the 2008 Year in Ideas issue of the New York Times Magazine. I got uh, a lot of calls and emails as a result, um, trucking companies, uh, some automobile companies, but uh, everyone at that point wanted a prototype, and I had no prototype. Uh, I thought there would be real interest in the idea, and there was, uh, but I had a hard time finding uh, both uh, people who both understood the engine and could take it on as a project. Uh, and then as well, most of the industry folks that I talked to had a hard time believing that I could achieve the gains in efficiency that uh, my calculations showed. So, of course, I had to venture in. I finally set about designing and building a proof of concept engine on my own uh, with most of the parts machined right here in this garage. Uh, some of the larger parts, the more complex parts, I couldn't make here uh, because of the machine tools I had. Um, but fortunately, I had a friend in Phoenix who owns a commercial machine shop and uh, he was able to, to help me out and make those parts, and uh, I will be forever grateful to him. So uh, from the early drawings and sketches uh, of the engine to the engine running, um, it took about five years, um, and it was early 2018, January, that I completed the engine and ran it for the first time. Started right up, ran well. A good friend of mine who was president at the time, who, had built a couple of airplanes, said, man, you just don't build something like this and have it run for the first time. And uh, needless to say, I was pretty happy with what I was seeing at that time. So uh, now I had to do some testing. So with the proof of concept engine built, uh, I began my in-house testing. Of course, all of the equipment that, that I was going to be using uh, had to be built and calibrated as well. Uh, and the numbers uh, in the end were uh, just as I had predicted. Uh, and while having an operating engine and, and uh, good test results uh, that were good enough for me, I knew uh, it was going to be important to have a third party validate my numbers to help convince others. So during the pandemic, uh, I had third party friction testing done in Detroit. Uh, and it turned out that those numbers were right in line with mine. And uh, the engine was just as efficient as I thought it was. On top of improved efficiency, uh, there are a few other aspects of the engine design that I think really makes it important. For one, 
it's lighter and more compact for certain applications than other in-class engines. Uh, another plus is that it doesn't require any exotic materials. Uh, no rare earth metals like we see as being necessary in electric vehicles. Uh, it's just nuts and bolts engineering. And then uh, this is a finer point, but because the increased efficiency is gained in the mechanism of the bottom end, it can be paired with the vast majority of other fuel efficiency technologies hybrid powertrains, fuel-efficient transmissions, variable valve timing, without compromising its own gains. But one of the most exciting visions for this engine is that it could actually be carbon neutral if coupled with e-fuels or electrofuels, the fuels produced by extracting CO2 from the air and through electrolysis using renewable energy, converting that CO2 into liquid fuel. The way I see it, the internal combustion engine isn't the problem. The real problem is the type of fuel it burns. With e-fuels, we have the potential to have a closed loop on our CO2 production. In other words, we can burn, or what we burn, uh, can be pulled right back out without a net addition. But in the end, with or without e-fuels, I think we're going to need the most fuel efficient technologies leading us into the future. And I hope I don't sound brash or arrogant saying this, um, but I keep going back over the numbers. But I think the Brickley engine provides the platform for the most efficient piston engine ever made by a wide margin.